So yeah, Stanley Clark, what initially brought me to him? Now, let us know in the comments if you're a Stanley fan. If you even, you know, if, if you're not a bass player, there's every chance you don't even know who he is because he's kind of one of those unique um, artists, um, similar to, you know, Victor Wooten and, and other people where uh, they're very, very famous within the bass playing world. Um, but, you know, outside of that, maybe not so much so. But let's just say that, yeah, um, absolute legend and um, innovative player, right? So... And let me know what, if, if, if you're a Stan fan yourself, um, to any extent, what drew you to him, you know? Now, most people say school days. Right? Yeah, that's what, that's what they are saying. Uh, yeah, I've just blacked us out. It doesn't matter. We'll come back. There we are. Yeah. Yeah. So most, most people say school days. Uh, excuse me. For me, it was different. I wasn't, um, I wasn't aware of school days. Um, you know, uh, I kind of just discovered him because somebody said he plays piccolo bass right i can't remember who this was it might have even been my dad actually uh, but somebody close to me knew about this concept of piccolo bass and i said what's that and he said well it's like i think it's like he ch it's tuned you know an octave higher and it's more like a lead instrument uh, and the other thing that people so i was mad on slap bass at this sort of 15 year old uh, stage Nothing's changed. And, uh, you know, and he was known for doing a bit of that as well, right? So, um, so that's, that's really why I see, uh, sought out his, his stuff. And I just think I went down to the local uh, record shop. I might have even seen an advert for his new album coming out, right? So I, I didn't know anything about school days at all, you know. Um, I think this was like 1985, maybe it was 1986, maybe, but it was that period. Um, and yeah, I saw Time Exposure. I'm going to see if we can get the, um, the, the, the artwork up on the screen. But yeah, I saw uh, in the record shop, I saw Time Exposure. And that was his, his latest album. And I was absolutely besotted with this album cover, right? I mean, it looks really... It probably looked a bit dated at the time. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought it was just amazing. Uh, let me just type that in again. Stanley Clark. Time exposure. If anybody has got the uh, the secret to um, how to multitask, do let me know. Because <laughs> I'm rubbish at that, right? I've, I've I've found this. So yeah, I don't know how much I can zoom in. Oh, that's really cool. Here we go. Let's let's bring this up on the screen. Now this it's really funny because this album, right? Most people I talk to either don't like it right, who are Stanley fans, or they've certainly never really heard it, right? Now, that, <laughs> that album cover for a 15-year-old me, right, was just like, what is this all about, you know? And um, so I remember buying it and doing the thing where I literally rushing home to put it on the turntable. It might have been, even been me and my mate Chris Lewis, and we put it on. And the first track is a track called Play the Bass, Right, and uh, what I'm going to do throughout this stream is have a, is have a stab at just playing a couple of seconds, I think we'll get away with it, of, you know, of, of Stanley from, from these albums. It's literally going to have to be a couple of seconds. And the first track, sure enough, it opens up with, um, if you don't know, with, with this double-tracked um, slap bass part, right? So um, here we go. I'm just going to shut up while I type. <laughs> Right, um, be good if I had that music playing, wouldn't it, really? So, what's this? Watch this. It won't, it'll be with the one thing that isn't on online, won't it? <laughs> Hang on. Right, here we go. Let's have a little stab at this. Let's see what happens. Um... Right? So, yeah, I was like, what is going on here? That's the first thing on the album, you know? And... Um, yeah, I mean, just that. I was like, oh, wait, like, put it on again, you know. And um, funny thing about it is, right, I never actually worked that out. You know, I never actually took the time to sort of sit and learn that. And I'll explain that in a minute. Because what happened after that, you know, when the rest of the album played, well, that just took me by storm, right? Um, so what I'm saying is I kind of arrived at Stanley through thinking, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this slap thing and, and, and he's known for doing 
that. Um, and then as the album went on, you know, it was all this all this stuff he was doing. Now, he was playing a lot of piccolo bass and he was playing a lot of what I know to be tenor bass, which I think I saw Gary Denny on some, at some point with one. Um, we're backing that up. But yeah, um, so... So before I go on, I'm, I'm just going to see if there's any more comments uh, on the stuff I was asking about, Stanley, come in from Jan. Anything, Jan? Uh, as relating to what? Yeah, just to, why, uh, they, why any, they got into Yeah, them. and if anybody else, yeah. Um, so Stanley Clark, it turns out that memorable most soul is uh, tune. So obviously it's Stanley Clark, school days, memorable tune. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mostly school days, right? Yeah. People, people says hello from US San Jose, California. How you doing? Hi. Um, all right. Yeah, Gilles. It was Gilles that says more so means tune. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah. Um, uh, David Milne. Let's have a look. First got into Stanley Clark via Rock and Roll Jelly. Right, yeah. Um, oh, Hugh says when I was with Rhodes County, we did a show with uh, Miss King. Angie King. Oh, wow, that's What ace. a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, well, that's in there. Let's have a look. Oh, Andy St- uh, Stratford's asking, how's the new chair? Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent there. <laughs> the new chair is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, like proper life changing. Let's have a look. Or, Together again, great track. Says right, Andy yeah, Stratford. yeah. Stratford. Yeah. Um, and then we've got John Sutherland says, Love Him, School Days was the first album I heard at uni. So again, yeah, it's, it's School Days always, always comes, you know, that is generally what people uh, say. You know, that's generally the thing, you know. And and just quickly on that, Jan. Um, David, David's on to a different one. I've just popped that up for you. Who actually likes to find... This, this is the thing. He's brought that much stuff out, right? That um, and And like for me... Um, I, my favourite stuff is all the stuff around that period. There's that one he brought out, you know, with the tap dancer, you know, and um, just so cool. But yeah, f- for me, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know about that. Now, what, what happened, Jan, you see, with School Days is mm. that came out in like, was it 76 or something like that? 74, but it was like mid-70s, mm. I think. And um, there'd just been nothing like it before at mm. all. You know, I mean, there was nobody doing anything really like that. Mm. So I get the power of that as like when it came out, people were like, what the hell's this guy on with, you know? And, mm. um, you know, so, but I kind of missed that. Um, um, and it was, uh, yeah, like I say, it was really the, the, the thing that just got me hooked into the bass thing was, was, um, was Mark King. And of course, by that time, people were, were already like emulating, weren't they? Like, especially, I mean, Mark King particularly, you know, when he, he was doing a lot of his sort of finger style stuff, um, solo type stuff, it was very Stanley Clark, you know? Um, and obviously the slap thing was, was like, you know, to another level and all that. So, um, level 42, in fact. <laughs> so, yeah. So for me, like I say, I came to that album and um, I'm going to get into these five things. So I'm going to bring my list up because I don't want to miss one of my five things. Um. By the way, are you are you freezing? That aircon was just nuts. no. I'm fine. But, oh, oh, she's just showing off. <laughs> but you're sat right next to it. No wonder. <laughs> so right here's here's the five things. I'm just going to go through them one at once. The first was his tone, right? That sound, um, and it didn't seem to matter, you know, whether he was doing the the tenor thing or he was like playing his regular bass, um, but. That alembic sound. Now, a lot of you will know that that this bass, in in terms of its proportions and stuff, um, it's it's very heavily, you know, nodding in in the direction of uh, Stan's alembic. It's a short scale, and it's um, like I say, uh, it, it's a bolt on as opposed to um, a neck through. And obviously, we're talking about uh, Stanley Clark's basses are crazy money. You know, I used to look at them, it'd be like $21,000 and stuff. And I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> um, but a lot of the sound, I've had an Alembic actually, uh, like a lower end Alembic. And, um, and it is really one of those where there is, there is so much beautiful tone in, in the electronics, right? Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter what you do with a bass shape or anything 
that those tone circuits um, and those pickups just have something beautiful and magic about it. If it's what you like, some people don't like that sound, you know. But that was the first thing. It was like, what is going on with that sound? Um, now I'm going to try and pull up. Um, let me see. Just turn the music off here. I'm going to try and pull up a little bit of 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 this stuff so you can hear the tone I'm talking about. Right. Uh, I think Heaven Sent You, I think that's got some stuff at the beginning which is quite solo -y. Um Let's have a look. Now this might, this might be piccolo actually, which it probably isn't an Alembic, but I'm going to wait till it comes in because I don't want to get kicked off my stream. <laughs> Give us one sec. <laughs> Gary says it. It's only fifteen thousand dollars now. The bass. <laughs> Hang on. Nope. That's <laughs> bear with me, guys. I'll f I'm going to find a track uh, where it's got. Um, I'm sure there's one where there's, there's some really beautiful uh, playing around right the beginning. It's quite difficult. This actually. Um, Right, so I'm, I'm, what I'm looking at is a track. By the way, you should totally ch check these albums out if you haven't already. Sorry about this. I can't play anymore. It's going to kick me off. But, you know, just that tone, I was like, what's the deal with that, you know? Um, and so so that was the first thing that totally grabbed me. And um, and ever since then, I've loved that tone. And part of it is the, is the bass, part of it is the electronics and stuff. But a lot of it is just him, you know, obviously. And um, and my, he does this thing, if you haven't sort of checked it out already, you've probably seen me talk about this, where, um, you know, it's kind of like he plays, so he plays very much like this which I think comes from like the upright bass. If you look at it, you know, it just it just kind of transfers like that, right? But he really, really digs in. Now, I'm not going to try and do it the way he does it, but um, you get this kind of like... You know, this really kind of um, attacky kind of sound. He uses a lot of compression. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes quite a bit of reverb as well, you know. Um, and it's just a really, really cool sound. And um, so, yes, um, and, and you'll see, like I say, Mark King uses that a lot, you know, um, when he's sort of soloing away, that really diggy in kind of snappy sound. Um, and so, yeah, so I used a lot of that in um, in, in some of my material and stuff, you know. So the tone, yeah. Anyone else like grabbed by the tone uh, of Stanley's stuff, you know? Number two was his use of piccolo and tenor basses. Now, this is really weird, this, because it, it was instant for me. You know, like I think I said, even before I heard him play, that was the other thing I was interested in hearing was like his piccolo playing. Now, the tenor thing, I didn't know. I didn't know about it. I only discovered later that some of that higher register stuff was tenor bass. Now, I don't know, like maybe not everybody knows what I'm talking about here, but um, but piccolo bass is, you know, a regular bass tuned an octave higher. And um, it gives you this really beautiful kind of guitar-y sort of sound. Um, and I'm going to just play a little bit, if you don't mind, of one of my own tunes, uh, because uh, hopefully I won't get <laughs> kicked off of playing my own thing, right, Jan? <laughs> this, is this uh, the tears? Yeah, to, heaven's yeah, tears. Heaven's this this track, right? It's like a thing I put on my EP, and some of you might have it. Um, but it's so Stanley inspired, right? So all the lead parts on here are piccolo bass. Can I just say, Jim's asking what's a tenor bass? Jim Turi. Okay. So a tenor bass is is where instead of it being like tuned an octave higher, um, you you know your A string becomes the bottom string. And so it goes like that. So what's it going to mean? It's going to A, D, G, C, right? So so it just means that it's a little higher. It's, it's a really, really good... Um, uh, Wooten uses it an awful lot. It's a great tuning if you're kind of doing that solo thing. 
because it's still, you know, I mean, you know, bottom A is pretty, <laughs> get rid of that reverb, you know, it's pretty meaty still, you know. So you can put down bass lines, you know, if you're using a looper and things like that, you can still play, you know, what bass, if you like, proper bass. But with that extended range, it's what you'd have on a, um, a six string, you know. And uh, yeah, you know, so so he used that a lot more. And it kind of kind of makes a lot of sense, really, because you're kind of bridging that middle ground in between piccolo. If you walk on stage with a piccolo, it's like a, sl a limited guitar kind of thing in a way, right? You know, but... Um, the, the tone is quite similar. So let me let me just play a little bit of this track. Uh, this is Heaven's Tears, right? And... Chris Lewis on drums up back me. Mad. Yeah, so that's that's the sound of a piccolo bass, right? You know, it's it's a beautiful sound. And I I got it instantly. It was like, I want to do that one day, you know? It took me a long time to actually do it, you know. Um but I've but I figured a short scale bass might be easier to do it with. I don't think his actually is, his piccolo. Um because you could, what I did is I got guitar strings um, on a short scale bass, I don't know, about 20 years ago, something like that. And uh, they reached to about here. <laughs> so I tied a bit more guitar string on, just enough to get them around the pegs, you know. Uh, and, and I had a go at that, uh, you know, I think I used the bottom four strings off, a, you know, the lowest four strings off a guitar set. And yeah, and it just made sense with me. Now, a lot, I, got, I got a lot of like, you know, confrontational t folk online when I talk about piccolo, because it's like, what's the point? You know, you may as well play, uh, you know, guitars and do that job better and stuff. But, you know, I, I, I think as an artist, it doesn't matter what you do, you know, like put some, like, I don't know, some wool over a Wellington boot and pluck that if that's what, you know, <laughs> works for you. Um, you know, I don't get this kind of like, you know, pigeonhole and things. But, yeah. I love that. So it'd be interesting to know if anybody else uh, out there really dug the um, the piccolo thing. If it's all right, Jan, I'm just going to... What? <laughs> I'm asking permission from Mrs. <laughs> what? I'm just going to play for a minute, right? Because I'm Absolutely. freezing. I'm going to freeze. Right, I'm just going to do a bit of... Um, have you turned it off, the air conditioning? I've turned it off, yeah. But, uh, Mind it, you, I have got a sweatshirt on. So. Yeah. So while I'm just like waffling on my bass for a minute, just to kind of warm up, uh, yeah, drop me comments in what you think of that piccolo thing. I'm cool, you know. Like if you if you one of those that thinks it's ridiculous and stupid, uh, drop that in. We'll, we'll you know. Well, David we'll... Mills says uh, piccolo bass is a better timbre than a guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It's kind of um, it's a different timbre as well, you know. Uh, it's not really going to work, is it? <laughs> Unless I sit there for like half an hour and warm up. Right. Okay. So let, let's let's get on with the next uh, the next thing, the next thing that really you know spoke to me, if you like, from Stan's playing. And I've written down his flamenco style chord strumming. Right. So anybody out there, you know, drop in the comments whether you know what I'm talking about. School days is kind of like getting there, I guess. Um, so again, I'm going to use some drums to hide my freezing cold hands. John Sutherland says, uh, love that tone. Thank you. Very kind. Right. So, um, so school days, like I'm tried this for a long time, but it's kind of like. Something like that, right? In, but in tune. Now, so that's probably for a, first, a lot of people, that was the first time they heard like those kind of chords or sort of power chords being played on a bass um, and stuff like that. Um, you know, and that, 
that was really cool when i actually did hear um uh school days but i can't even like specifically tell you where i heard him doing this stuff like, it's somewhere in those albums right but he was doing this thing where he was he was doing the strumming thing right <laughs> Something like that, right? It's been a while since I've done it. Let me see if this zoomed camera will work. So what's going on there is he, um, again, like King, um, <laughs> what is that? Hang on. Mark King ad adopted a lot of this. What he's doing is he's kind of like hitting the, the, the strings like he does in school days, I guess. Hey, look, it's frozen. That's good, isn't it? We're off to a flying start here, everybody. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's, he's doing that, right? Okay, and, and so he's, he's using his fingernails. And by the way, I don't think I saw him do this. That's the thing, like a lot of us back then, I don't, I had no video of this, right? Um, yeah, Mark King, I had loads of that because he was on telly all the time. But Stanley, I didn't have any video of him playing at all. So this was all, I had to kind of, my ear kind of get an idea what he might be doing and i'd seen mark king doing all that you know that kind of stuff so i figured it was it was like that so yeah so what he's doing is he's strumming down so he's kind of like starting with like a clenched fist not tightly and then like flicking the fingers out you know like that and using the the nails you know to hit the strings and you can get a you know, I know it when you come up as well. But he was doing this kind of thing that almost sounds flamenco, like where, I guess, and I think he does this, he was, you know, kind of fanning his fingers out like this, right? So yeah, and um, and I, again, it just kind of blew me away, you know. And and you'll hear at, at certain times, you know, if I'm if I've got a solo, or you know, if I'm putting like a bit of an arrangement together, and there's some chordal stuff in there, then you know, I'll definitely use some of that. And I'm not going to say I even compare to the way Stan does it, because you know, it's just mad, and he does this stuff on upright bass as well. But again, it was just a, a huge thing that really spoke to me. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's another thing that I use a lot. So I'm going to shut up for a minute and see if there's any interesting comments come in, Jan, or... Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's tons of them. I'll have to just... I'm really sorry if I don't get... <clears throat> excuse me, if by I don't way, get to your comments. By the way, I warmed up then. Oh, that's good. <laughs> the nerves got to me, you know. <laughs> that's good. Um... Yeah, I do apologise if I can't get round to them all, uh, but there's a lot here. Um, I'm just going to look at the ones that relate to <laughs> Dave Onions. You can tell this is live. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that's... <laughs> uh, and Jim says, no, mammy on here, Dave. Absolutely not. Not at all. Um, You've got background music, like. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Tracy Chapel, I love piccolo bass and intend to try it as soon as possible. Um, yeah, we've spoken about that quite a bit through email, yeah. She loves the tone of piccolo bass, definitely not the same as guitar. It's not it's, it's not quite as harsh as guitar, is it? You know, guitar can... I know, obviously, there's different... Like, I love George Benson uh, and... Um, All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I love George Benson and the sound of his guitar is so... Oh, it's like velvet. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, da, da, da. let's have a look. Dave loves the fact that you're playing bass like a lead, you know, like lead, obviously guitar. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and the other thing to bear in mind as well, if you're a bass player, yeah, and you want to do soloing and stuff, yes, you can do it on normal bass, 
but you can play a piccolo bass the same as you, your guitar. So, uh, you know, like a, a, more of a guitar sound, but the way you play is more natural because, you know. Well, the, the, that's Jan's right, actually. That's that's the thing about it. It's that, um, it's, you know, uh, that was for me the thing that made so much sense is, you know, so, I mean, just think about it logically, right? We're, we're you know, we're bass players for, for the most part in, in, in the stream, you know, but um, so, you know, from day one, you're spending most of your time or certainly I, I would think so anyway you know learning things that are going to make sense in you know playing in a band or maybe there's other bass players that you love the sound of and stuff but you know you're going to be learning you know Beatles bass lines and they, so you're going to be working on you know your finger technique maybe or you're going to be working on uh, playing with a pick but whatever you're doing everything is in this format isn't it it's like some you know that sort of you know, 18, 19 mil spacing generally, right? You know, a longer scale, bigger frets. You know, this is home. This is what feels comfortable, right? But, you know, isn't it the case that some of us might want to, you know, I'd like to play a melody from time to time. You know, it's like, like I'd like to sing a song. It's like that, isn't it? You know, I'd like to be the, you know, the one that's kind of, you know, leading the melody, Um how am I going to do that without learning a second instrument? Because I play guitar, right? Um, but I consider myself a bass player because that's what feels like home. And I've got so much more comfort and facility on the bass. If I play guitar, I don't. I'm like kind of like a bit stiff and I'm like, uh, you know. Um, and, I, and that's why the piccolo bass firstly made sense to me. It means you can just suddenly be in that realm, you know, that kind of solo instrument space without changing a damn thing you just use everything everything's comfortable everything's familiar right um and then the other thing which jan's touched on and uh was it david and and you know a few other people is the tone is actually different so it's it is unique i mean you know in stringed instruments we've got lutes and bazookies and um, you know, all kinds of stuff. And some of them sound a little bit similar to others, obviously, but they've all got a unique thing. And piccolo bass has a unique thing to bring to the table. And as well as that, bass players tend to use generally different techniques to, if you like, regular guitar players. You know, they tend to use the fingers like this a lot. And I haven't seen very many guitar players use the fingers like that. I've seen them use them like that. So again, that's bringing something different into that sonic space. So there you go, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, Ray Boyle, hi Scott and Jan, I'm watching you in the big club in Newton Aircliff, having a few beers as I'm not on schools in my coach tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Hope you're well. Oh, Brilliant. Enjoy the rest, Ray. Do, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, what what are you on to there? Because I'm just obviously conscious of the time. Okay, well, yeah, I've just, yeah, I've just got a couple more. We're on to, we've done three. <laughs> we've got four and five to do. So, uh, so yeah, shall I carry on? Yeah. Right. Okay, dokie. So number uh, number four is his use of artificial harmonics. Right. Um, it's really funny because I've written all these points, and really they all at the end, boil down into one thing, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But yeah, his use of artificial harmonics. So what I'm talking about there is, um, and I used, you may have seen me use things like this, I've certainly done um, like lessons on this stuff and that, is it's this, um, so when, when you play, so, all right, let's, let's just back up a little bit. Harmonics, right? You know, when you hit a fret, you know, and it carries on and you get these, Okay, they're really cool and you can use them. You know, and a lot of people use them like that. Uh, a little bit trickier than that, in a way, are artificial harmonics. Um, and, you know, there are loads of players who've, who've used these and guitar players use them a lot and stuff and there's different ways to do it. And Jacko was, was known, but the guy, or the player, yeah, yeah the guy that, that, that I heard doing this the first was Stanley Clark, and it was in the middle of again one of those albums, one of those. Um, it was either Time Exposure or Hideaway, um, and yeah, he was doing. Uh, let me think. Uh, 
I can picture the track, can't think of the title. But um so so yeah. Uh so what he's doing is if we play like a note here, let me just see if I can get this zoom camera to work. One sec. Hopefully. I don't know. Got gremlins today, Jen, haven't we? I think I think this cabin's got gremlins full stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, we're like trying to push the envelope every week and something happens, you know. Um right, let's just try this one more time. Let me just deactivate that. Activate that. Hang on. One more time. It's got very quiet. It has been, and I'm just being stubborn, really. I should just carry on without it, but I really love it to work. Hey. <laughs> that was an evil laugh, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cr cracky. I'm terrified now. You've set me off now. Yeah. So, so if I want to play like a series of notes like this... <laughs> But I want to use harmonics. What I've got to do is find the halfway point between the bridge and that note, right? And I've got to kind of touch that point and then pluck it somehow. So they, you've probably seen me do this. Uh, that's what I do. I find the point like that, and then I pluck. You see, for my money, that that little finger, although it feels kind of awkward. It doesn't sound that different too. That's the little finger. Right, so that allows me to kind of play with a bit of um, gusto. <laughs> and uh, and then, t whilst touching the harmonic point with this finger. So let me try that, hang on. Okay. Hang on. And again, if you put a load of compression and reverb on. It sounds really, really cool. And Stan uses that peppered throughout his kind of solo work and things like that. And it just, again, I was like, what is that? You know, like I suppose it, it's true to say I like, you know, I, I got excited by the different tones and textures and things like that he was doing. Because it wasn't just like regular bass playing, obviously. He's great at doing that. But, um, well, thank super you very much. Chat. First Super Chat today. Who's this? Oh, Gary Denya. Let's name. Oh, let me get to... Say that again, Jan. I went to... <laughs> <laughs> thank you so the much. French thank you. French got to me before, you know. Uh, oui. He says, nice artificial harmonics. Hard to get right, but so effective. Thank you. Yeah, and they are. They're, they're, they're very cool. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful tone. Um, you know, that, that sound, it's get, got that kind of chimey sort of bell sound. But he's right. It's like, you know, um, y if you're not on it, um, hang on. It's quite hard, and, and you've, it's one of those where you've got to kind of practice it a lot. What I used to do is play kind of scales. And hey, oh. Super chat. <laughs> Thank you. Who's this? <laughs> Is Jim, it like, can Jim I just, Churi is trying to turn us into the roly polies, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'll just that, thank you so much, Jim. So hang on, what we got? Uh, hang on, let me get bag this. of chips for you. To, let thank me you. Get up. The, the <laughs> cool thing is, that it genuinely actually is going to be chips at Blackpool. That's the cool thing. Thank you, thank it you is. so much. I'm thank just, you, Jim. I'm just wondering. It's you know, I've, I've just discovered that every time I do an artificial harmonic, does it do not? <laughs> A hey, flipping out, there'll be lots of chips. <laughs> right, anyway. So, yeah, really quick on that one. Uh, I take scales. Right, and then what I do is is you've got to kind of mirror the whole system, if you like, up here. So. Now, it's one of those things you get into a bit of a groove with it and you're like, yeah, I'm on it. You're on a roll and, and then you kind of like lose it, right? Um, but if you're having a stab at this stuff, um, I would recommend having a go at that. That's my, I think that's my own little technique because you get, when you pluck near the bridge, I wonder if Gary knows why, the, the harmonics shoot out a lot more than when you sort of pluck here, you know, right? 
And so that thing, like the Jacko thing, I mean, who am I to say? He made it work freaking amazingly, right? But, you know, that, that thing, um, I just find it, because I've never practiced it, tricky. Whereas this, uh, <laughs> isn't working now. When you hit them, when you get it right, you know, you, you they really poke out. So yeah, but yeah, just, just take something like a scale. Let's see, C major scale. And then what you do when you're practicing, just move up and down until you find the point where it's strongest. And then like, hang on. <laughs> Oh yeah, hang on. And that's the thing is, is I recommend just once you've kind of got the rough thing going on, is to just kind of try and like not look at it and just. Okay, a cool idea you could put a fret wrap on there if, if you know, you're getting a lot of that s extraneous noise. But yeah, I kind of digress a little bit, but that's another thing that really, I really loved about Stan's playing. And it just, so it's really interesting. Like I say, um, I, I never really looked at his slab stuff. I love to listen to it, but there was, I kind of just like really got all this other stuff from him, you know, this other music, if you like, right? So, number five, this is the last one on the list. Can because I just say, did you say um, the it, it was easier near the bridge when you played the strings? Yes, so yeah. So, Gary's response That's says, right. uh, yes, longer string standing wave, more sustain, uh, also dependent on scale length, different on a 34-inch. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's got, yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, so, so that's the thing. It just... Um, Camera. Yeah, I do this a lot. <laughs> Number, thanks for that, Gary. Number five is he's, and this is what I'm saying about everything kind of coming together. It's his structured solos. Now, again, you know, if you've never listened to those two albums, Hideaway and Time Exposure, before, or if you have and kind of didn't get them, maybe, because a lot of people were put off because there's a lot of drum, you know, sort of sequence stuff that sounds like drum machines, a lot of synths on there, synth basses and things like that, right? But you listen to the solos, his solos, Stanley Clark's solos, on those tracks, and they are just the most wonderfully crafted solos. You know, some, some of the most wonderfully crafted solos I've ever heard. Very studio, you know, so they're not like go in and blow a solo and that's it, you know. Really, you can tell there's, you know, like comps of take after take and then he's thought, right, what we'll do, we'll, we'll double track that, we'll put a harmony on there and then we'll have a bit where I play in octaves and, and you can tell it's very written, it's very structured. Uh, I imagine it's been a mixture of coming up with ideas before going in the studio and then, you know, and then laying ideas down and then seeing how they could build it and, and you know, in a kind of, you know, Queen at, uh, you know, a night at the opera kind of way, you know, like layering it up and, and, and they're just mad. I mean, like, you know, you, you, when, you know when a solo's coming because there's this kind of like big build up towards it. It's like one of those where there's a dance floor that parts, you know, ready for, <laughs> ready for the, 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 you know, the main man or couple to come in and dance. It's like that. You can feel the solos coming, you know, and the, everything's parting the, and, and may, you know, opening up for the solo. And they're just, wonderful you know just amazing um and that's the thing you know he's using all these different techniques to create a really interesting bass experience you know bass solo it is very solo stuff that um a lot of what i'm talking about excuse me so what i'm gonna do it's a real pain um it's a real on and shame that on these streams we can't just you know blare out even though it's then kind of an educational thing um, I'd just love to sit with you all in a room and just get these cranked up and like, you know, but, uh, they just close the stream down quite rightly because of copyright. So what I'm going to do, 
because it's the nearest thing I've got to talking about all this stuff, is I'm going to play a bit more of Heaven's Tears. Because I complete, it's a complete nod in uh, you know the direction of Stanley Clark, the whole thing, right? And I'm not going to play like the whole thing. But I'm going to play enough where hopefully you can see the way that I've structured the solos. And maybe I'll just kind of like narrate a little bit through it. I, don't, I hope this is cool. It's the, it's the best... It's the best kind of, you know, tribute I can do and, and the best way I can explain how all this stuff comes together, right? So, um, so let's have a do. Here we go. So I'm going to... So I'm going to get it... This is the melody. I'm going to get it past this, right? Let's have a look. This is melody in a... Right, so that's the first thing. I've just stuck a harmony on there. All the time using that really diggy in kind of, you know, that kind of tone, that sort of Stanley thing. Now let's get it in a little bit further. To look at. Oh, wow, thank you. Super Who's this? Chat. Thank you very much, guys. Andy Stratford. But he hasn't uh, commented anything. But thank you so much. You know, it do chuck a comment in uh you know if you've got one or a question thank you very much indeed um yeah so um so here we go this is kicking into the solo now this is complete stanley thinking you know right so i'll just start with regular stuff sort of camera solo -y stuff this now Hang on. Right, that. <laughs> that slide, you know that. Now I didn't just pull that off, you know, like this is this would took me ages to um, kind of put this solo together. But that's a very Stanley thing, you know, like like that kind of, you know, like clever little move into the next section. Uh, There's a really Stanley solo bit coming up in a sec. These these harmonies now. And the octaves now. This. That was a Hendrix bit. But yeah, you know, um, hopefully you get... You get the, the idea that uh, what I'm talking about that's you know take that and times it by a thousand and that's what Stanley brought to the table for me you know you listen to those albums and those solos they're just so beautifully crafted um, and you know hopefully you can hear what I'm talking about the influence in in, in that tone and stuff but yeah you know um, that's kind of like those are the main things uh, I got from Stanley you know there's loads of other things like you know, when I did finally see him, I've never seen him actually live, um, like some of you guys have. But yeah, you know, his stage presence and um, and all that as well. But yeah, I mean, I hope that was kind of interesting. <laughs> it just feels like me waffling on for, for like an hour today. But you know, you've got to try these things. It's um, nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the cheek of it, right? <laughs> but I did enjoy that. So if nothing else, thank you for, for letting me share all that stuff. Um, I don't think I've played particularly much today. But, yeah, you know, just in interested. Anybody got any thoughts on, on um, that stuff I've said? Anything come in, Jan, at all? Um, Gary says that's pretty much nailing Stanley there. Right. I I'm assuming they haven't, haven't uh, tears. <laughs> David Mills says we need T-shirts saying I nailed Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh Oh, Dave says, absolutely great to see you back in your element. And Mr. Drummer 316 said, that's so good. Um, Thank you very much. The Heaven's Tears. 
Very yeah. kind. Thank you. Yeah, but like I say, it was just um, that whole thing was just um, it was it you know it was all about you know the, the, the written for the piccolo and and as I, it kind of unfolding it, I was just one hundred percent in that kind of Stanley frame of mind. You know, I wasn't trying to copy um, so much what Stanley had done or anything like that, but I just. In fact, I think it's almost like, obviously, that was the influence, the piccolo bass and stuff. And then as it um, developed, and then I listened back, I was like, like actually, in a, in a nice way, I was really pleased to think, like, wow, you know, that's like a real nod in the direction of, you know, my hero or one of my heroes, uh, Stanley, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, he did. He, there's all other kinds of bits and bobs that he, he you know, the, the, you know, the neck thing, you know, bending the neck and. He had a whammy bar and a bit. I think, really, generally speaking, he, you know, Stanley is and always was a showman as well as a great musician. And a lot of the musicians I like, you know, are great showmen as well. Um, and so, what you get, you get beautiful, heartfelt music um, with all this color and texture and, um, and and kind of fireworks as well. You know, which which I love. I love all that. So, yeah. So that's like about it, I think, for me for this week. Um, are there any, any other comments we should mention before we go, Jan? Or? Well, I'll just say Mark Smith says, I didn't know anything about Stanley Clark or heard of a piccolo bass before this, uh, before this afternoon. Sorry, that something popped up then and I got to the end of the line. Um, so, yeah, not heard of Stanley or piccolo bass before this afternoon. So this has been a learning experience for me. Thanks. That's great. That's really, really cool, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, you know, like I say, I did feel like maybe I'm preaching to the converted, but that's ace, you know, to to know that you're going to go and check him out because it's because he's like, um, like I say, there's there's so many players out there that, um, you know, just being quite frank, uh, technically just in another league to maybe most of the players that we all loved from like our period, like technically, you know. Um, but these guys were the, the innovators, you know, these were the guys that that, that that started doing these things and paved the way for everybody else and still have a very unique, niche kind of approach, you know. There's, oh, there's a ton of stuff, isn't there, with, with Stan, like the way he gets his sound, using like a bi amp set up with a little guitar amp on the top and, you know, that he drives, and, you know, loads of stuff, but yeah. Um, uh, Jim actually saw Stan at Ronnie Scott's Wow. Uh, he said it was great, but he only played one track on electric, uh, electric. It was a bit disappointing, but not as disappointing as seeing Tal perform her first solo album. Is that the female bass uh, player? Well, if he said her, then yeah. Tal yeah. Winker w- Wilkerfeld. Yeah, Wilker, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never pronounce it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so not as disappointing as seeing her p- perform her first solo album. Be interested to know what, what that, that was all about. But yeah, that's the other thing with Stan. It's really funny because when, when he's like interviewed he always talks about the upright doesn't he and and i think he just sees the the you know the electric bass as a bit of a toy you know <laughs> but it's yeah i think it's really done more favors for him than the acoustic bass so yeah mr drummer says i've always struggled to get stanley's fast signature run it's been a real uh mental block for years right yeah no i mean he does these kind of flurries i mean he's got this like thing going on and um you know, some of the time, it is it is more of a, like, flurry thing. You know, there's certain big, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, don't quote me on this, right? You know, but there's certain greats in music, um, uh, you know, Django Reinhardt in the guitar world and stuff like that, where they do these mad things and you go, what the heck was that, you know? Um, and sometimes, like, Django did this thing where you go, you know, like, and you think it's this mad flurry of notes and he's just, like, tremoloing while he slides up. I'm not... Not saying he's just doing that, but um, I think sometimes there's a bit of that with Stanley. He's doing, he's got this thi- this motion he does, and um, you know, it's. I, I don't think it, it's it's pl- approach from a play those series of notes thing. I think it's more like he's using that technique over a series of notes. You know, um, I think that's what it sounds like. But yeah. Well, I've just noticed the time, and I'm thinking people might be wanting the tea. Yeah, we <laughs> should. <included. laughs> we should. I just say this, though, David Mill, it made me chuckle. He says, just looked at my piccolo bass, and the strings are rusty. Evidently, I didn't nail Stanley and gave up. 
<laughs> but that's that's a nice thing if you if you've not done it, you know the 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 piccolo thing. Um, I'm just I initially got this off off Rick, a uh, friend uh, out in America, and um, and this was going to be strung as a piccolo. But when I got it, I put regular strings on, and I don't want to play anything else. So um, yeah, on the lookout for a, a, a short scale. Uh, the few people I know might be able to sort of you know lend me something or whatever but i need to have another piccolo in the in the in the bass cabinet at the minute because piccolo bass is doing really well as a search yeah. for us isn't it on the channel and you know? i think you're gonna delve back into piccolo bass at some point aren't well, you that's, well that's what i'm saying because yeah. yeah because the channel um i don't mean as in uh, getting a bass guitar i mean actually doing some stuff about you are it. right john yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know what i'll do for next time i'll have backing tracks for this kind of thing but anyway yeah um i hope you enjoyed that guys. great to hang as usual uh, great to share just some of my passion about this stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad it's 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 pointed some of you in the direction of Stanley Clark, um, because that's the thing. Not you know, not everybody, unless you kind of exposed to him, you know, through a friend or or you, you know, um, you're not forced to to know who these guys are, you know. So yeah, anything else, John? Uh, Mark Smith says chips. Um, um, <laughs> Gyps are calling. <laughs> and Mr. Drummer three one six says, "Thanks, Scott. You both enjoy your chips. <laughs> we, we we're gonna do big uh, time. Yeah, yeah." And Gary says, "Take it easy, guys. All the best." Mark Smith says, "I'm off to tell my wife I need to pick a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I Love hope it. it's your birthday soon, Mark." <laughs> uh, Jim says, "Lovely to speak to you all, guys. Hope to see you next week." So you yeah. too, you too. It's been great as always. And uh, yeah, you know, the, there were a few little new in innovative things in the stream today, I think. You yeah. Know? So, um, it's a lovely little get together, isn't it? This on a Sunday now. It's really nice. It sure is. So there's a lot to come with the stream. Um, you know, we're, we're going to keep it going. Like I say, just keep it coming in. Um, whether this time works for you, doesn't work for you, we can't find a time that works for everybody, unfortunately. But um, I guess it kind of it seems to be working. You know, it seems to be okay. Uh, we did wonder whether like evening might be better but then I'm sure there's a lot of people in the evening will maybe want to sit down with a glass of wine with the family or the wife or whatever so so we'll, we're going to keep it at 4 at p.m. this time for, for the foreseeable um, but we'll just keep our eyes on the data that comes in yeah um, and we've got just different ideas haven't we about things to do in the future and some of the live stream absolutely so so, so yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, again. Thanks, everybody that supports the channel. Thanks for, um, you know, the members, everybody. So much appreciated. So much um, more to give from this end. So uh, just keep your eyes peeled and your ears peeled. And, uh, yeah. Oh, you've set a thing off for people, people. Uh, people, people. I'm going to say the name again because yeah. I don't know if it's male or female. It okay. says, I got to find all my Stanley CDs. <laughs> but yeah yeah go check them out yeah that bit like diving around trying to find this Stanley. that's it <laughs> and uh by the way you know like let us know next week if you do do find yourself having to delve into those two albums um and if you do like i say just listen to them with fresh ears if you didn't like them the first time round, um then just see if you can uh, you know apply those thoughts i was talking about and just to see if you can maybe get that out of it this time round. but anyway yeah it's uh, horses for courses uh, just a quick message for you. Uh, JRB Bass and Music says, just bought the Stu Handbook, Scott. Finally, someone did it. Thanks for putting this time in. Up until now, all we had was the Hot Licks vid. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I uh, much appreciate it. Right, okay. Well, thanks very much, guys. Um, and we're going to shoot. We're going to go over to Blackpool in the rain and the wind and get yes. blown around eating cold chips. Fantastic. <laughs> and getting... And get, and Pooped on by what's the first is yeah seagulls lots Se of seagulls <laughs> that's it okay <laughs> thanks very much <laughs> see you in the next video cheers bye. and bye for jam see bye. you later thank you very much indeed and straight